Coming to you live from the city that never sleeps, New York City. It's Up Late with Johnny Potenza. got everybody here what's going on mark Teresa. hey how you doing johnny how's going, buddy hey johnny how are you what's up so, hanging in there if, uh, if i was to complain yeah. it would listen right hey man we're, happy, we're <laughs> exactly. happy you're still doing the podcast you know with the covid and everything and that we can get on with you we appreciate it i did it just for you because i i even told chris i, I was i was just stepping back from this and just getting ready to get back into the studio in the mm-hmm. uh in the late fall what were the dilemmas of the release of the movie a couple of different times that you wanted to release it? Yeah. So in tw- we, we finished shooting the film in the summer of 2018. And then it goes into a long period of, uh, of editing, you know, post-production. Uh, 2019, we screened it uh, as the um, closing show of the Newark International Film Festival. Mm-hmm. Teresa, you were there. And uh, they did a nice big panel discussion with us and we were the closing film and that theater was packed, man, right? And uh, a couple of hundred, probably three, 400 seats. And so that was just like the first go at it, you know, the first release and you hit the the festival circuit because you want to get audience reaction and feedback. Uh And since that time, I was listening in the theater to all the jokes that I wrote at home in the script and thought were hilarious. And it was like crickets, you know, and then some stuff that I didn't, I thought was like, yeah, you know, man, uproarious laughter. So Mm -hmm. then you go back into editing and you make another adjustments on things, shorten some scenes, lengthen some others. And then we did another festival and another festival, I think total of five, uh, where we won uh, seven awards total, which is great. Congratulations. And and then we spent the time in um, just, just cleaning everything up you know, and uh, then it took, you know, you got to raise more money and you got to do professional sound and we got that done. And then we got a distributor, uh, Vision Films, which we love. And May 11th was the official release, not not the pre-release with the festivals, but the official release was May 11th of this year. So we just passed four, four months in, a week, in two weeks or something, or three months in a couple of weeks. And, uh, and they let me go back in and, uh, to do a new sound design, uh, excuse me, color design on it to clean up all the color because we hadn't been able to do that strongly enough. You know, the, the color design costs a lot of money and we're just a little indie film. Yeah, but they let us go back in and I got this phenomenal color designer from Hong Kong, Frank Tien. And uh, he came out to our event last Thursday at the um, Museum of Moving Images and he shot all the pro shots for us. And his wife, uh, uh, Ying sh- shot a video and she's putting a little five minute YouTube thing together at the event of all the talks with the actors and stuff. So it's officially out. And I think September, I mean, uh, next Friday, it comes out on Amazon Prime. Oh, so good. it comes off of pay-per-view and goes to Prime. So millions of more people will be able to see it. We were just waiting for the color and sound to be done to, to do the broader release. That's an interesting story. Let's yeah. go to so many actors for now. Then I want to get back to you, Mark, because I got a couple of questions for you. Let's go to Teresa. Uh, now, Teresa, I know you acted and you could say you, do, you uh, dabble with comedy. I don't even know how long you've been doing comedy for, but was this your first like major role in, in the movie? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is one of my first leading roles in a movie that actually came out. So as you guys all know, as actors... <laughs> I've been in plenty of movies. I just haven't seen any of them. Um, But so yeah, I actually uh, started acting when I was a kid. So I would do commercials and like modeling stuff and all that when I was little. And then after college, I went on and I studied with Susan Batson um, and then decided to kind of take acting more seriously as a career. Um, And then, so yeah, this is one of my first leading roles that has 
gone all the way through the sound design. Everything else yeah. just gets, <laughs> all the other indies fall off somewhere along the way. But but yeah, and then I've been doing uh, stand up comedy for about three years now. Oh, cool! You've been uh, nice. So that's you, fun. Are you any good? Because we're looking for. Of some course. <laughs> of course, I'm good, Johnny. Yeah, that would be good. I best with everybody. I'm the best to ever do it. If you ask me. That's what no. you got to say. <laughs> you got to you, you say you're the best. Oh. Um, good comics are hard to find. They are. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I studied comedy at UCB, and I've always kind of been in the comedy scene in New York. And so I started to do stand up um, about three years ago, just as a way. And Chris, I'm sure you can speak to this as an actor, like we, nothing's ever our own. We never have our own performance, our own. We're always auditioning for something or reading something else or embodying these other people. Um, so stand up was really a great creative outlet to just be able to get on stage. And like, if there's five people at a cafe and there's a show going on, like, okay, you could do five minutes of comedy and like connect with people, make people laugh and, and really get that kind of performance itch out of you when, when you're not auditioning or you're not shooting something. I always wanted to do stand up. I, I, Cause I'm a big bull bus. I think I'm funny, but I can't, you gotta I, try it. I got to, I'm scared. I got to get, I got, I just got, <laughs> I just got to jump up on the stage and I, do it. But uh, one day, hopefully. I will say it is, the, it's the scariest thing. It's still I, so I scary, it but it's so much fun. You could be the life of the party, but you, uh, or bust everybody's chops you come in front of, but you, once you get to that stage and you're not trained to be in that moment of being a comedian, because that it is a tough, I think that's tougher than being an oh, actor totally. sometimes. Oh, totally. I mean, you got to deliver because if you're not funny, you're dead. Exactly. Exactly. And also what's funny, like it's such, it's such a subjective medium that we, you know, what Mark thinks is funny is not what Chris thinks is funny is not what you think is funny. So it's like, yeah, there are certain themes as, as human beings that we all usually laugh at, but when it comes to, you know, there just might be a crowd that's not that into you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You just kind of get off the stage and you just, you know, you move on to the next one. So let's go to my man, Chris. I want to put on my glasses now. I'll take them off. Chris, how you doing, my brother? You know me? Can so you now me? I can hear you. Before, yeah. I couldn't. I don't know what was going on. I hear you. I hear you. Now, Chris, <laughs> I've seen you in The Sopranos. Big Sopranos fan. Uh, Phil Leotardo's brother. Great job. Uh, Boardwalk Empire. Playing tough guys. Now, going into Made in Chinatown. So you're playing a tough guy. But you're playing like, like the kind of goofy, like, like do to do type of like tough guy. How how hard was that for you to get into that character compared to the, the persona that you played like in The Sopranos around all these like real like mob actors? I mean, even though all the mob actors were in this, they kind of all played like a funny part where you never really get to see these guys do that. Well, first of all, I, I find a lot of humor in these type of characters. Mm-hmm. Just organically, you know, growing up around them in Brooklyn, working and, you know, in all these things there. I mean, if you watch The Pranos, it's not a comedy, but I guarantee you'll laugh at least, you know, every other show. You, you, you know? laugh because they're funny, because they're nuts, like, right? That's the thing. So I tap into that aspect of them and uh, and just play a little, even a little more comedy. But the, the trick with playing comedy, and I'm sure Teresa knows this, mm-hmm. is you don't play the comedy. The movie was written as a broad comedy. Okay. Really, all I had to do was read the lines, you know, and uh, totally, and not take it that seriously. But then again, take it very seriously because there's a scene where I feed a guy with a loaf of bread. That was great. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Bread to me, that loaf of bread's a crowbar. So if you just balance it like that, you know, and it's written well, there's the comedy. Like my mother watched it. And she don't like the mom movies, but like, cause she watched it cause I had that little, little, little thing in there, but she wanted to see it, but she loved the part with the Italian, but she's like, I think that's nice that they didn't hit him with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a movie, it's a, it's a great movie for everybody, all ages. Story. Because you get your kind of mob fix, right? From all the guys you've seen on everything before. It's funny and, uh, and it's a good time. Like grandma could laugh at it too, you know? So. Yeah. You know, like they, Tony Darrow could be funny without even be funny. He just has to. Oh, he's funny. <laughs> he's he just has to him. speak. 
He so I just have to speak. You should have heard him at, at the Museum of Moving Images the other day at the Q&A. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Mark just kept familiar. giving me eyes. I was like, don't look at me, Mark. I'm not. I, have, I take no responsibility. <laughs> and even Vinny Pastor, like when, when he's in a real good mood, he's hilarious. Yeah. Vin is so funny. I agree. Yeah. And then Goon by Johnny, that's what I wanted to ask you. So like yeah. Goon by Johnny, I know a long time, great, great guy. But watching him play like those parts, it's, it's just funny, you know? Yeah. It was very funny. He did a good job, too. He was really funny. You know, Goomba Johnny and I spent some time working up a scene where he could add some of his shtick in there, you know? And um, so he and I spent some time writing out. A, so there's a scene where, um, uh, um, what's his name? Angelo Lutz brings by, or Jojo, brings by the bag of the spaghetti sauce and all this stuff. And he's like, you're in for 20%, right? And then uh, Vinny Pastor holds up a bottle, uh, a box of uh, eroxetin for his the little blue pills. Uh -huh. So that's one of our investors' products, you know? So we had to have a oh, product placement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They make us, that's their supplement, right? So I didn't gotta, know that. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, but that scene was like seven minutes long because we had all this stuff about whose girlfriend, whose pharmacist, don't go to the pharmacy, go to the doctor, you need blue pills, you got to limp this, you know, you, your girlfriend's too young and Johnny's doing all this shtick reading down the line. And it was really <laughs> funny if you didn't have the, the story part in the beginning and after it. So the scene just got so long. You're like, when's the scene going to end? <laughs> Yeah. that we had to cut that whole middle part out, but we're going to put it out in some outtakes. Now with the cast of all the Italian guys in there, did you have it all planned in your mind? Who are you going to pick or ideas or you just put the cast well, all out there? No. And it's just when I, I feel unbelievably blessed to have these guys like, and, and Teresa and Chris, like everybody, because I wrote it as this little tiny little idea, you know, you know, 500,000, $100,000 little indie film. And then um, Shing Ka, who was one of the producers, and he played um, Ming, you know, you know, Shing, he played one of the t uh, Chinese tough guys, and he played one of the Asian uh, homeless guys, the uh, mm -hmm. Wisdom. And um, he was doing a movie called uh, Sarah Q, right before Made in Chinatown. They were rapping. And in that, uh, he had, um, he had... Um, who do you have in there? Vinny Pastor was in there and uh, a small, you know, cameo and um, uh, Paulie from Rocky. Uh, yeah, Burt Young. Burt Young and, he, and, um, and Tony Sirico, right? A lot of guys so, were in there. Yeah, so I called Shing up and I was like, Shing, I, I want to get Tony Sirico. Can you see if he'll play Al Capella? And then he's, uh, Tony Sirico, uh, the casting agent, uh, Caroline Sinclair said, send me the script you know, and, and I'll send it over to Tony. Tony read it and said, it was so good, but I'll do the film if you'll have Vinny and Pastorian with me. And I'm like, twist my arm, are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> me? Like, twist my arm. And then we, we yeah. And then, um, you know, um, um, so, and then what happened was that um, right toward before, a couple of weeks before we were starting the film, uh, Tony Sirico had some health issues and couldn't do the role. Yeah, that was a so, shame. It was really nice to see him in there. Yeah, and Burt Young was cast as Condimento. That's why it's in a boxing gym to spoof Rocky because he was a boxing coach. So wow. he's in the boxing gym and he can't really get We're going. We're learning all the secrets. Yeah, right? and Tony and Al Capella says to him in the first scene, you were nothing but a broken down fight promoter till I met you a major yep. work star. Because people were supposed to see Burt Young. Right. And he's in the boxing gym. And that was like this whole nother development of things. But then Bert got sick with some, you know, personal health issues before we started. So it was like three card Monty. What do we do? So I called Vinnie Pastor and I said, I need a replacement. I said, I'm Bert Young can't do it. I'm bumping you up to Condimento because he was fouting soda Eddie. Oh, he wow. Was he was, I love right. it. And imagine, imagine anybody except Tony, except Tony playing that. Like, Tony Rossi, Tony Rossi was um, Zach Bayer's role. 
Can you imagine that? Oh my God, how funny. Yeah, so Tony became Yeah, I mean, it, it, it all could have switched out, but really, Tony, no, Tony, Tony is fountain soda is so funny. And then, and then uh, Sirico, Tony Sirico got, uh, was sick. He couldn't come in and make it. So I, I called Vinny. I said, Vinny, Sirico, Tony can't make it. What do I do? He goes, cook Tony Darrow. <laughs> like, yeah, let me just call Tony Darrow. I, I love that they're table. all absolutely already sitting around the same table yeah. having coffee while this right. is all happening. Like, to, yeah, Sirico gets up from his coffee and leaves and just gives the part Tony to Darrow. Darrow. And like, like, they're all already at the same they're table. All right we there. already know this. <laughs> yeah. When I met Vinny, Vinny came down, was doing something, a, a, a signing at a, at a convention in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I'm, I'm outside Philly and I drove in to meet him there. And we sat down and ate dinner. And he just opened up his phone. He's like, who do you want in the movie? You want this guy? You want this guy? And he's like calling people. Yeah, You want to be in this movie made in Chinatown? He's like, you know, it was funny. So I, I called it. Tony Darrow, who I've admired for just forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I said, um, excuse me, is, uh, may I speak to Tony Darrow, please? They're like, yeah, this is Tony. And I was so intimidated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Tony, um, my name is Mark, blah, 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 this movie, blah, 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 blah. And I'd like you to bring you in on this role. It's a lead role. And he's like, uh-huh. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you say, I better get paid the same as everybody <laughs> else. And I went the billing at the top. And you're going to do this how many times a day? You understand me, sweetheart? You call me back and think about it. And I was like, uh. I, we were talking to Bob McGowan, who represents, you know, uh, Raymond J. Barry and, Vinny Pastor and Chris, and he said, "Hey, I got a perfect guy, Chris Caldovino." And I was like, "Set him, man!" <laughs> like, oh him God, yes, all the like all of a sudden, I got all these amazing people in this. You know, the, the Italians. I, I I knew how to cast the Chinese. You know, and and the Kung Fu guys. And I was like amazed that I got those guys from Hong Kong to come out. But then I got all these Italian guys from every movie we've ever seen and every TV show. And I was just yeah. like, "How does this happen?" You know. You know what was good that I liked that the that, that the, the the Chinese fighting scenes weren't cheesy. That yeah. was my concern when I was watching it. These yeah. guys really knew how to fight. Yeah. So the two guys on the tabletop, the one guy who's played Hung Fat, right, the mob boss in the movie, <laughs> his fat. name is yeah. His it's the stereotype. You turn it over. He's not small. Yeah. He's fat. You know. Uh, his Mark name is Lo that Mom. story every chance he gets. I do. Uh, uh, he's like a legend in Hong Kong cinema. I grew up as a, as a 10, 11 years old watching him on Saturday afternoons him. and they had these Kung Fu movies broadcast on channel 29 uh -huh. and they were dubbed in British, you know? Um, and, and I was like, to have, he's done like 150 movies or something and to have him come out just to do this little thing, his first American movie. And then the old guy who comes in, Hai Chu, God bless yeah. you, uh, comes in to fight. You know, he was in Jackie Chan movies in the 70s and he was at Kung Fu Hustle. I mean, the guy's massively famous. And yeah. so the, I got him, to, you know, we had another guy from Korea to come in, a, a kicking fighter. And so, and then he got uh, turned around at customs for, you know, our president was cutting down on the immigrants coming in and he couldn't come in. And the night before that shoot, we didn't have anybody to come in and fight on the table. And I wow. needed somebody famous as a cameo. So we called Master Chu Chi Ling. And I was like, I need you here. I need you at 7.30 tomorrow morning. He said, okay, I'll pack. I'll come now. And I said, I got him a ticket. And he flew right out. Wow. Red, red, red eye slept on our couch in the production office from 7.30 till 10 in the morning. Went over and learned the choreography real quick. And he's 81. Oh my God, Mark, did you like have hair before you started Made in Chinatown? And like, that was the... Like I had a, there's I already had a, I had a caldo like, vino. I had a caldo vino. Like, yeah. I feel like I just stressful. heard like ten stressful stories that I like didn't even know was happening. Yeah, it was like there was a, a lot of stress the production. That. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Now, what about you, Chris? What was like your favorite part of the movie? I mean, the scene where everybody's uh, at the end. You know, the, the fight at the end was fun, but we also well, we have a fight in the uh, in the in the restaurant. Um, that, that it's in Consulary, yeah. That breaks out. That's fun. And then uh, me, uh, uh, Tony Darrow, Paul, and myself with... Um, Danny uh, Kalingo? Danny, with Danny. Fun scene where we, me, Paul and I drag uh, the... Jeez, um, I forgot his name. The lead. 
Uh, yeah, Vinny, kid, right? Vinny, right. Jake Juan, yeah. Tony, and they have that little bit about the, uh, you know, Mushu guy, Pan, you know, you know Mushu, yeah. you. It was just fun doing that. We spent, uh, we spent a few hours doing that scene. It was, um, and then Danny kept like, like, Get going on the wrong cue, so I'd be behind Danny. I just was steering him out. <laughs> and, and Tony so funny. Thank you, thank you. Because I he wouldn't come out, so I'd like just guide him out onto set. <laughs> and so, what about what about what about you, Teresa? A lot of fun. My favorite part about favorite the movie. Part. Um hmm, honestly, one of the days, I mean, I had fun all days. We had so much fun in Philly. Um, but when I have the stoop scene with Tish, who plays my mom, we just, Tish and I just like clicked from the start and we just had so much fun that day, just talking nonsense and like drinking black coffees and like, you know, completely improvising the scene for hours and hours and hours. And it, the scene is probably like a minute long in the movie, yeah. um, but she was just so funny. And like, I'm Italian American. So it felt like I was talking to like my aunt or like, a you know, a mother figure of my own. Um, so that was really, really fun. Now what's yeah. the plan? You got the DVDs coming out with the new version of, of the new cut? The cut that's on the DVD is the same that's, on on streaming now and will be on and the same as we showed yes Thursday at the okay. Museum of Movie, but it's not color. So they're okay. gonna now the new DVDs coming out will have the the new color on it, but everything else is cool. the same. I want to say something about Chris, so Chris can talk a little bit about his acting method. Yes. One thing I noticed uh, about his acting in the film that I hadn't noticed previously is you know when he's being funny, he's like. He comes in, he's like, hey, I want you to try and tell special. And his neck flares out, you know. And then when he's talking, he's like, oh, no, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, but when he gets angry and starts putting on the muscle, his neck flares out like this. It's like the voice comes from deeper down. Is, is that on purpose, Chris, or just something that you do? Honestly, I never noticed and realized I did that until you brought it out. Huh. And I went back and watched myself over the years, and I do that. I... I get well when I get into that character. When I get mad, I get mad physically from inside and out. Right. You know, all acting from the inside. Right. The face, the acting, and the feeling causes the external whatever. You know. So. Yeah. I love it. That's I'm, so cool. Uh, I don't do that specifically, but the type of acting I do is from the inside out. So maybe that explains it. You know. So yeah, you're pulling up the energy. Cool. You know. I had to the up the energy. Everything, yeah. A lot of people in the editing booth and the festivals, uh, um, different distributors who had seen it say, who, you know, the, the girl who plays Tina, if you just watch her face in every scene, she's doing all these facial expressions <laughs> that are frigging funny. And then I stopped watching Jay, like in their scenes <laughs> together, and I'm watching her. So he's trying to shake down the deli guy, and he's like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and then, you know, she's making a face at the deli guy who passed away. That's uh, why I know. wanted to just interrupt Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Parami. Definitely got to make a treat for soul. Jeff Parami. He was Absolutely. one of the I, sweetest, nicest sweetest, guys. Sweetest, funniest guys. Funny guys. Remember we got at the yeah. Borgata and saw them do his burlesque show. It's friggin' hilarious. I tell you a fast, funny story. And this, I, I got I to tell this because Goombay Johnny hooked me up with Jeff Parami. I only knew him about three years before he passed. We got really close. Uh, so he comes on my show. It was like the second to last before I retired, the late night show before I took off. So as soon as I get in there, he's heckling me the whole time I'm in there. And like, and I'm like, this fucking guy. I'm like, I'm like, doesn't this guy let up already? And, and so I get up, I do my monologue. He's in the background. Hey, Johnny, you know, to get back. Like, you know how we is. And, and I'm getting, you know, when you get anxiety when you're performing, but you're holding it in, but you feel like you're going to blow up. So then I'm, I'm like, okay, okay. So then, we do the show. He gets up. He does his stand up, and then he said this. He, he, he goes, "Where's Johnny?" He goes, "He goes, I don't see him." He goes, "He said I'm over here." He goes, "He goes, Johnny, you a made man?" I go, "No, why?" He goes, "He goes, they should have made you a little taller." <laughs> so like he kept busting my chops. The end of the thing. At the, uh -huh. I, I go home at the end of the night. It was a great show, uh, but I was a little annoyed at him. So I, my 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 fiance Michelle that I was with at the time, and she goes, "How was the show?" I go, "It was great," but there was this fucking guy, Jeff Palami. He was just busting my balls for the whole night. I go, I go, this guy was a real pain in the ass. I go, I'm never going to have him on the show again. 
So three days later, I get a call on the phone. I pick it up. He goes, Johnny B. I go, who's this? He goes, it's Jeff. I go, that's Jeff, exactly what he's saying. Like. What are you doing? You're going to bust my balls tonight? He goes, no, listen. You know, I'm sorry. He goes, go by Johnny told me to bust your balls. That's why I do it. Buddy. <laughs> I go, you gave me, you know, you know, I'm a ball bust. I go, but you, you know, you know, you gave me, you know, I held it in. He goes, I'm going to make it up for you. He goes, I'm going to take you to the Teddy Atlas Foundation. He goes, it's $500 a ticket. For you and your girl, I go. I go, Jeff. I can't really afford a thousand dollars for tickets. I go. I go. I'm, 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 not, I'm not set like that. He goes. No, you jerk. I'm. I'm going to treat you two tickets, five hundred dollars seat. You're going to be sitting with me. Tony Daniels is going to be at the next table. He goes. Think about it. I'm like, all right. I go. Yeah, I'll go. He goes. Okay. Go. Call me tomorrow. I hang up the phone. I go. I go. Michelle, that was Jeff Parmami. He goes. Were you nice? I go. Yeah. I go. But guess what? He goes. He just. He just offered us two free tickets, five hundred dollars each at this big event. I go, what a great guy! <laughs> <laughs> and then after uh, that, we became like really tight. And he mentored me with a lot of things. He brought me around a lot of stuff, and he hooked me up with Teddy Atlas and a bunch of people. And then when he died, it was like it was yeah. like oh, you know, I talked to him a couple weeks before he died. I kept in touch with him, and it, it, it hurt. It was and even going by Johnny, and I only knew him for three years, but I felt a big loss when he died. Yeah, for sure. So he was at our, we had an open casting uh, one day and Jeff was there and Tony Darrow was there when Teresa auditioned. Mm -hmm. They were both in the back. That and, was like a super day. Like, I feel yeah. like you guys went through this like crazy, like super day of auditions. There were so many people, so many different roles. Like you don't usually see that. Like, you know, yeah. Chris can speak to this too. Like you go to the audition, you see five people that look exactly like you and like, that's it. Yeah. So one of the girls who auditioned for your role, uh, for the Tina role, and, and didn't get it, she needed uh, a ride back to New York because, and then, so Jeff's like, well, I'm driving that way. I'll take you. And she goes, oh, that would be so nice. He says, just let me ask you a question. Are you allergic to duct tape? Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you allergic to She was probably like, tape? she was like, she was probably like, I'll take the bus. <laughs> he was like, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. And before we go, Chris and Teresa, tell, tell us what's going on next. If you have any movies coming out, anything for us to look forward to. So right now I'm doing um, stand-up comedy. My next show um, for stand-up is September 17th at the Tiny Cupboard in yeah. Brooklyn. Um, that's on the books right now. I also just joined a new sketch comedy team called Beverly. Um, we had our first show last night at Asylum NYC. Um, so that is so crazy and so insane and so much fun. Um, so we'll be doing shows monthly um, there. So sketch comedy, um, probably looking like every third or fourth Monday of the month. Um, we'll be doing sketch comedy shows at Asylum NYC. So that coming up, lots of comedy, and then just hopefully I'll book some of these auditions and be on TV soon too. You will, you will, you will. You will. What about you, Chris? Uh, I just actually shot an episode of uh, uh, American Horror Story. Uh, I have a guest star role, um, supposed to recur. Um, we shot one already, I think it's episode seven of the upcoming season. That's gonna be really, uh, really intense. Um, I'm, uh, I'm attached to a film Mark, uh, has in the works called Mileage. That we'll talk about We're that. We're shooting in this fall. And, um, a couple other things in the works that I really can't talk about with, uh, some, uh, producers of Boardwalk Empire, possibly. So good, um, good. Good luck with that. Amazing. So great. Mark, plug your new, your new project before we go. Yeah, we got two new ones coming up. One's called Mileage. It's a, a movie I'm I'm producing that the script was brought to me. Uh, it's like a uh, Elmwood Leonard style book, like Out of Sight or Get Shorty, you know, kind of a film. It's set in oh. Philly, but we're going to shoot it in upstate New York uh, because there's no good tax credits here in Philly. I mean <laughs> you know, you, you, whatever. So we're going to shoot in the Hudson Valley. Amazing. And um, yeah, we got a couple actors attached. Chris is one of them. Uh, he plays a tough guy, you know, uh, to a mob boss who's a lesbian woman. You know, it's, it's oh, a shit. pretty interesting Very character cool. mix. Yeah, yeah. And, and so on. And then another one that I wrote and that I'm producing and co-directing is going to, it's called The Dragon Letters. And it's a big Kung Fu movie with a lot of stars from Hong nice. Kong. They're shoot it in Malaysia. 
Um, oh my God. Right That's after amazing. Chinese New Year. Yeah. And wow. um, I'm bringing um, Shuya Chang over, who played Mei Wong in our movie, and Shin Ka, and all the rest are actors from Hong Kong and China. So and it's cool. going to be really filmed in Chinese for the Asian, big Asian market, and then dubbed here for the cool. Western market. It's going to be a big challenge for you there. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two next ones on the slate. Oh, Very I think cool. that was promised. Hopefully, uh, 20, what is it, 2022 is going to bring us all back to so. some form. I mean, we, 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 all, we all need to catch up. But I'd like to thank you all for coming on. Uh, congratulations with everything. And Mark, thank you for getting me a little part in the movie. And hopefully we'll work together again in the future. Well, Chinatown, too. You know, you got to bring back the gang. That'd be sick. Yeah, and you you get a little bigger role because I gotta get bumped. I gotta get bumped up. You gotta get bumped <laughs> off. <laughs> you bump me off as long as you bump me up. I don't care. I like getting killed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, oh. Teresa. Uh, first, Johnny, Teresa, and Chris. When you guys are promoting your show or your 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 um, sketch thing and your thing, post it on our Made in Chinatown page too. Oh, definitely. You know, we oh, yeah, got a lot of good, viewers yeah. and they want to know what our actors are doing. So feel free to share, please. Cool, oh, cool. Yeah. 100%. And, and then share I'll... it on my page too, you know. Great. So yeah, all my people idea. see it too. You know, we'd share the love. Yeah, yeah you got it. And then yeah, I'll call you yeah. after Mark for about that other thing. Uh, see if we can yeah. lock it down whenever. Yep, you got it. So, all right, guys, listen, God bless. I love you. And uh, good, hopefully, good. I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks, Thanks so much, Johnny. Appreciate it. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Thank guys. You.